Well, thank you, Serena, for the invitation. And uh, as Serena told, uh, I will speak about one of my favorite molecules, multimarine two, and its role in angiogenesis. Well, everybody in this room knows what angiogenesis is. It's the development of new blood vessels from pre-existing vasculature. Uh, the major players in this process are endothelial cells, which need to proliferate, uh, migrate, and differentiate to form new vessels. Um, angiogenesis is a hallmark of cancer. In, indeed, tumor cells will not tumors will not grow beyond the size of few millimeters unless they trigger through the secretion of angiogenic factors angiogenesis to support uh, their growth with uh, uh, nutrients and oxygen. And Judah Folman in, in the 70s was the first to put forward the idea that targeting the vasculature could have been a, a nice means to uh, start the tumors and reduce uh, tumor growth. And since then, antiangiogenic therapy actually entered the, the clinics, but the effects of, of the treatment diluted the expectation since uh, uh, there is only a small increase in progression free survival. And this is thought to, to, to be due to many reasons. One is intrinsic resistance because tumors will start to secrete growth factors other than the ones that are being targeted. But also, uh, like vessel pruning leads to the formation of hypoxia regions and increase the potential of mutation of tumor cells, which become more aggressive and eventually they will form metastasis. So uh, one of the uh, promising uh, new alternatives to, for uh, antiangiogenic therapy is vessel normalization. As you know, uh, vessels associated with tumors are abnormal, they are large, they are not well organized, and they are leaky, and they also lack pericyte um, uh, recruitment uh, coverage, uh, which uh, pericytes are important in uh, uh, favoring the stability of these vessels. So one of the hypotheses is that by normalizing these vessels and restore the hierarchical organization of these vessels would lead to a improved drug delivery within the tumors and so better efficacy of the treatments. And we believe that multimarine 2 plays an important role in this context. As Serena was saying, multimarine 2 belongs to it's a glycoprotein, a trimeric with glycoprotein, belongs to the Adam protein family. The archetype is amine one. There are other molecules characterized by an any domain, a coil coil region, like a specific region here, which in the case of multimarine 2 is an arginine stretch, mm -hmm. and the C1Q domain at the end terminus. And what struck my attention since I was working on antigenesis was the fact that the molecule is virtually deposited along the blood, all blood vessels. And we were the first to start to scratch the surface of, of, of the activity of this molecule. The treatment of uvic cells induced like a significant degrees of uh, endothelial cell motility. <laughs> And uh, this is an aortic ring assay in which the treatment of the aortas induces a, a striking decrease of the vessel sprouting, as you can see from here. And the same result was also obtained in chicken corentoid membrane assay, in which, as you can see, VGF is able to stimulate uh, the formation of blood vessels in a spoke wheel function, uh, fashion and if we added multimarine 2 in uh, the sponge, we were able to uh, abrogate the formation of these vessels. Then, mechanistically, we interrogated a series of a number of uh, receptor tyrosine kinases uh, expressed by the endothelial cell surface in endothelial cells treated with multimarine 2 or not. And we found these uh, spots here, which 
were significantly downregulated, and it turned out to be a bitter part too. And in fact, as you can see, the treatment of uvic cells stimulated with BGF, which induces a significant activation of the receptor, uh, in the presence of multimeric 2, the activation was significantly downregulated. And later on, we found that this was due to uh, the sequestration of the uh, cytokine of the GEF. In fact, this is a solid phase assay indicating that multimerine 2 binds to uh, VGEF, and this is the biocore analysis of uh, the interaction. And next, we identified the receptor for multimerine 2 in collaboration with the group from Siena, Maurizio Landini, who works on this molecule here, CD93. And he contacted me since uh, these molecules, they actually bind the C1Q domain. So uh, when I was presenting my data, they said, well, well this is interesting. Uh, let's see if the two molecules interact. And indeed, this uh, receptor, which, which is a C-type lectin-like domain containing protein, this domain here, uh, which is expressed by endothelial cells and has been shown to um, have a role in angiogenesis. The two molecules, indeed, they co-precipitate, as you can see here, and then we identified the region of the molecule involved in the interaction. It's this fragment here through the Galician fragments. It's uh, uh, this fragment B1X, uh, which includes the presence of the CTLD domain and the DX domain. And we also identified the region of multimerine to interacting, which surprisingly is, was not the C1Q domain, but it's a, a region within the coil region. And then, you know, other groups then uh, showed the same thing, the, the same type of interaction, and also with other members of the, the family of, of receptors like uh, CLEC 14 And also, the two molecules, we showed a like, nice colocalization of the two molecules. This is a, our vessel from malignant proid melanoma. And if we tamper with this interaction by the addition of the soluble D1X domain, which is that fragment, that part of the molecule, which interacts with the uh, CD93 receptor, we are able to disrupt, disrupt the uh, tubes in a, a matrigel, forming matrigel, the total number of, of tubes and branching points are impaired, as well as in 3D spheroid-based tests, we got the, the same result. Uh, interestingly, if we challenge endothelial cells with uh, um, androgenic cytokines, in this case we have used VGF, but it works also with other cytokines like uh, FGF, for instance, we got like a decrease of expression of the molecule. And we can see that also by immunofluorescence, the, these are endothelial cells, they deposit the molecule. Endothelial cells are the only cells producing multiple to by the way, uh, known so far <laughs> to express the molecule. Um, uh, as you can see, the molecule is deposited over time, but the treatment with VGF significantly reduces the expression of the molecule. We, we have next also identified the metalloproteases involved in the processing of the molecule. These are two metalloproteases that play an important role in angiogenesis. They are expressed during endothelial cell migration. And as you can see, both metalloproteases 2 and 9 are able to degrade the molecule. And we have shown to, for this to occur also in vivo, this is a colon cancer in which the expression of a metalloprotease 9, the active metalloprotease 9, colocalizes with a significant degradation of the molecule. <coughs> so to sum up, uh, you know, all the results in, in this part, uh, I mean, what uh, these results suggest is that multimerine 2 is necessary to s stabilize the vessels. 
uh, it's normally deposited up along the vessels, and upon an angiogenic stimulus, the protein must be downregulated and also cleaved to allow a sprout, an efficient sprouting angiogenesis. And then the protein is deposited back to stabilize these vessels, these newly formed vessels. So to sum up, uh, this part of the results, Matumirin 2 is exert an angiostatic function. Uh, it holds the activation of the VGFA, VGFR2 signal axis through the binding of B VGFA. And also, it's degraded and its expression must be inhibited to, uh, to favor endothelial cell sprouting. But what are the consequences of multimarine 2 loss? And this question raised from the observation that in uh, many tumors, we have analyzed colon cancer, uh, gastric cancer, and ovarian cancer. The expression of the molecule, as you can see here, with the double staining for CD31, is lost in tumor-associated vessels. Many tumors, many vessels, they express more of it. Some, they lose the expression. And this is another example, which you cannot probably see. But uh, I mean, there are lots of, of vessels which are not positive for multimeric 2. This is an ovarian cancer. As you can see, we get these vessels which do not express the molecule. So to address the fa this uh, uh, question, we went back in vitro and downregulated the expression of uh, multimarine 2 in endothelial cells. And what we found that is that these cells downregulated for multimarine 2 expression, they change morphology, they don't reach confluency. There are a lot of gaps between the cells, as you can see from here. Uh, so we looked at an important component of the endothelial cell cell junction, the cadherin, which is an important component of adherence junction. And we found that, indeed, the downregulation of uh, multimerine 2 induced a, the loss of the d cadherin lining, as you can see here. And these are electron microscopy images of two endothelial cell junction and we notice a lot of interdigitations upon multimerine 2 knockdown, and the number, again, of adherence junction was significantly reduced. Uh, mechanistically, we went back to VGFR because we knew that multimerine 2 had something to do with, with VGFR, and there is this publication indicating that the phosphorylation of this tyrosine, 94. 49 is very important in the regulation of d instability. In fact, the phosphorylation induces phosphorylation of SAR, phosphorylation of d which is then internalized and degraded. And indeed, the downregulation of multimerine 2 in the endothelial cells induced a strong activation of this. Uh, um, Tyrosine. This is the human counterpart of four, uh, uh, of nine for nine, and also activation of SARC. And this associates with an increased permeability of the endothelium. When we downregulated the expression of multimerine two in endothelial cells and uh, did this uh, uh, permeability, say with the use of Fitch dextrin, we found that these vessels are really more, these endothelial cells are more permeable. Then uh, we moved to in vivo with the uh, availability of the knockout model, and we use the um, um, retina model, is a, a very used uh, model in uh, the study of angiogenesis since, since at birth. Retis, retinas are not vascularized, they vascularize over time, and one can follow the vascularization uh, before like mechanisms of compensation are engaged. Uh, these, these are uh, retinas from wild-type animal, 
wild type animals, they are stained. You identify the vessels with lactin, and the expression of multimarine two is is in the soft <coughs> cells, as you can see here, the tip cells, which are the cells that are uh, actively migrating, they express little multimarine. So, and this is in agreement with the fact <coughs> that the, the molecule must not be expressed to allow a sprouting angiogenesis. <coughs> we then look at decadering, and actually we find also in vivo the same thing. I mean, the uh, expression of the molecule is completely abnormal with a lot of intracellular signaling as you can see here in the wild type, the uh, 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 decadering lines in the figure cells, whereas in here, the expression is totally abnormal. And also we got, uh, I mean, we confirmed the results that we had in vivo, in vitro, uh, with a, a strong increase of the phosphorylation of uh, VJFR2 at this uh, tyrosine here, which is involved in the regulation of the catering. Uh, interestingly, also these vessels were characterized by a, a, an impaired uh, recruitment of pericytes, the alpha smasma is detected with the alpha smasma stain. Uh, pericytes are very important in the regulation of vascular stability. Uh, next question was to verify or assess whether this could affect tumor growth and uh, to address this question um, we injected uh, wild type and uh, knockout animals with D16F10 cells which are a melanoma cell line syngenic for uh, black six mice and what we got was that um, the development of the tumors in wild, type, in wild type in knockout animals was slightly reduced, as you can see from here, uh, but significantly reduced. Anyway. And uh, uh, we thought that this had something to do, again, with angiogenesis, so we look at the vascularization of these tumors, and we actually found a, a, a slight increase of vessels which within uh, the knockout animals, uh, but these vessels were different from the ones developed in wild type animals. And the analysis of electromicroscopy images indicated that we, many of the vessels uh, displayed like a collapsed lumen. This is, for instance, a lumen from wild type animals. You can see erythrocytes inside. And this is the side of a lumen of, uh, um, uh, of the vessel developed in, well, in uh, knockout animals. So uh, we, we thought that these vessels, uh, they were numerous, but were not functional. So we analyzed the functionality of these uh, vessels through the injection of pitch dextrin and tomatolectin. Pitch dextrin is supposed to leak out of vessels if the vessels are more permeable. And indeed, in wild type animals, the uh, fish dextrin staining co-localized within the vessels, whereas in knockout, it leaks out of the vessels. And on the contrary, the perfusion of these vessels was dramatically decreased in knockout animals, indicating that these vessels were more uh, were less efficient. So to verify if this affected the delivery of the drugs and the efficacy of the treatment in, vi in vivo, the animals carrying uh, B16F10 tumors were injected with uh, cisplatin. And as you can see from here, uh, the efficacy of the treatment was really impaired in knockout animals. And the last thing that we did with this study was to verify indeed if the drug reached the, the tumor cells. And so we looked at, at the cisplatin DNA adducts within these cells and found that these uh, adducts were significantly reduced in knockout uh, mice, indicating that, I mean, the vessels um, expressing less multimarine are less efficient 
and the drug delivery within the, uh, with these vessels is impaired. So, to conclude, uh, multi-marine two knockdown leads, leads to the dismantlement of the decadering and increased endothelial permeability. Uh, the molecular mechanism in this context involves the phosphorylation of this tyrosine at VGFR2, which leads to the dismantlement of decadering. And vessels from multi-marine two knockout mice display in, uh, impaired VK during expression and also pericyte coverage. And uh, uh, that tumor-associated vessels from multimerine to knockout display, uh, animals display altered morphology with collapsed lumen, impaired efficiency affecting drug delivery and efficacy. And I would like to acknowledge all the people that work in this in particular in these projects, in particular Orlandini for the CD93, and uh, the present and former lab members, particularly Rosanna, Evelina, and Eva, which work in this project, and the Pauline Agency. And I thank you for the attention.